Ten. What was the other ones that I assigned? Uh, five and six. Six, six, and six, six, five and six, six? Two, yeah. Six, five, six, six. It was actually six, six, twelve. Oh, twelve. That's right. They changed it between seventh and eighth. Yes. It's the same problem, they just, it's problem twelve now. Because then they can sell, sell more books. I don't know why they do that. I mean, yes, they can sell more books. Yeah. <laughs> All right, problem two, which is the one you did email me about, you did support me about. That is the one where we've got the, the loop, and then you've got some terminals that have you know some V EMF across them. And then again, for being super pedantic, we always want to put a resistor in here. Um, and then we said that you know our coordinate plane. Looks like this, uh, Z, Y, X. And we said that, this is 6.2, we said that V is in the Z hat direction with some magnitude. They don't even give us, we don't even care. Times sine omega T, they don't give us omega either, which is fine. And that V naught um, is positive. So what is the direction of current at A um, omega t equals zero, B omega t equals pi over four, and C omega t Pi over two. So this is the setup, and it looks harder than this. And I'm even looking at the solutions manual, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, it they solve it mathematically. It works. We'll go through it, and then I'll show you. You can do it this way, but for what the problem is asking, you don't actually have to use the math. You can use your intuition, because all we care about is which direction. Is the current going? We don't care what the value is. If, if we cared what the value is, yeah, we have to go through all the math and do all the stuff, right? But for this problem, they're just saying which direction is it going? <clears throat> so, the solution for this one is just to remember that I is equal to V over R. Right? And in this context, it's the EMF over R, which is sort of a pedantic way to say that we're talking about um, sort of a transformer problem. Um, when you have the EMF, that means you might have some EMF that comes from the loop moving around, and you might have some EMF from it being a transformer, I'm pushing, when I say it being a transformer, I'm pushing some B field through a coil. It's become a transformer. Maybe not a very good one, um, but it's transformational EMF. Now the problem didn't say that this loop is moving, right? So we can assume that it's not moving. And yeah, it doesn't say that it's moving or not, so we just assume it's stationary. So if it's not moving, that's zero, right? And the EMF, is just equal to the transformational EMF, which again is that guy. Uh, and that hasn't told us anything yet, right? It's still, current is just voltage over resistance. Here's our R, right? That's all we care about. But from the book, they give us an equation. Uh, I'll, rewrite, I'll rewrite this, I is the EMF transformational over R, which is negative one over R times the surface integral of the time derivative of B over DS. And if you want to get really pedantic, you put the little arrow over DS too. And when, what's the surface here? It's this surface. What's the area of this surface? They don't tell us what the area of the surface is because we don't, we don't need to know it. It's not important. 
Um, so if we take the surface normal, remember the normal is at any point where uh, the normal is, is uh, perpendicular to the plane at all points. That's the normal. It could be defined as positive z or negative z, so let's just say it's positive z just to keep things uh, easy. Also, that's what the solutions manual does. Um, you could do it the other way, you just get two negatives, they multiply out, it's the same answer. So if we do this integral, which looks a lot more complicated than maybe it is, but really we're just taking the time integral of a sine wave. We could say that i equals Can you scroll down? Can you, just, can you just be a little more psychic and know what I'm writing without me having to move the paper? This solves out to negative a b naught omega over r times the cosine of omega t, uh, where a is the area of the loop. Right. We just we took an area, and it came. You just you're just multiplying by this area. That's what that's what this surface integral dot ds. It just turned into the area of the circle. It's not any more complicated than that. So that's how we got area, seemingly from nowhere. Okay. And so now we can look at this and say that area is positive, omega is positive, because we're not in an analog IC class right now, um, and r are positive. There's no such thing as negative resistance. Um, so if all these are positive, then this negative sign sort of stays put, right? Nothing else is gonna cancel it out. And at omega t equals zero, or t equals zero, it doesn't matter, that's what the book says, then the cosine, the cosine of omega t is one, which means that this is negative and i is negative. Right? So if I've defined my voltage this way, I could, I could say that this is negative. That is a way of looking at it. Right? And we could solve this out. This, this wasn't a complicated integral to do. You know, this, this kind of bit was just over explanation. Right? We don't really need to, to define V EMF into halves and all that kind of stuff. We can just do this, this integral. And that's fine. And we can see that our, our current is going one way or the other. Um, and remember, if we are looking at the, um, the phi hat direction, phi hat, it's phi hat. It's not on the screen, you can't see it. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, thanks. Phi hat goes that way. Right hand rule, remember? Yep. And which, which direction is negative now? This is positive phi hat direction. And it's asking which direction is the current going in terms of phi. So it's going to the negative. It's going negative phi direction. Yes. Okay. Now, here's where I say this method is sort of unnecessary. If we just look at the sign, we have the sign of something. We have a sine wave. Ignoring the fact that I missed my origin here. Here is the sine of omega t. And you go, oh, it's zero, right? The sine of zero is zero. But what is the current, what is the, the magnetic field doing? It is at its fastest point of positive change, or who cares? It's at its fastest point of change. You're gonna have the most current going that way. And it, since it's going up, you can pull the same information because Lenz's law says that the current's gonna go the other direction to oppose that change. So you didn't have to do a single integral for this. You could just look at the sine wave. And they looked, they, they wanted it here, here, and here. Mm -hmm. So here it's not changing, the current's zero. Mm -hmm. Here it's still going that same direction. Here it's at a peak going that direction. Mm -hmm. Done. You just have to know Lenz's law. Yes, you could do it. This is the difference between taking the class from me and taking it from maybe somebody else where they're gonna look at it and this they want the solution manual Maxwell's equation, not that Maxwell's equation should be avoided, but solve the problems. We're engineers, we solve the problems using the least amount of effort, right? Bill Gates like lazy people, have you ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. He's, Bill Gates famously said, I, I love hiring lazy people, they will always find the shortest way to solve any problem. I don't have any problems. 
<laughs> um, so we could go through this and I could do this solution two more times, but you can just look at it and see. If I'm increasing here and my current was negative here, it's still gonna be negative here. And I'm at a peak here, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be zero. And then I'm gonna start having positive until that's all you gotta do. It's the same thing as long as you have, if you know what Lenz's law is doing. Because remember, this is your B field, right? And then your current is negative uh, cosine, so I would be here, right? And this would be my current. Maybe it don't line up, but yeah, I guess. That should line up, but I'm not an artist. <clears throat> Questions about this one? Did this trip you up more than it should have? That's fine. That's why I signed it. Not that I'm trying to trick you, but it's some of these problems look scarier than they are, and they're they're, they're actually not that bad. Um, I will save these people want them for later. Take take photos. It's garbage to me once I'm done. So. Um, Five. Sit back down. I'm going to be standing for four hours otherwise. <clears throat> okay, circular TV loop antenna. So uh, I know that's an antiquated term, but there used to be loops of uh, wire that you sit on top of your antenna. Um, and it has an area of uh, 0 0.02 meters squared. And in the presence of a uniform amplitude 300 megahertz signal. So let's just kind of woo 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 300 megahertz. Going that way. When oriented for maximum response, so they made the hard part for us, the loop develops an EMF of 30 millivolts. <clears throat> And that's the peak value. So it's asking, my B field's going this way, what's the peak magnitude of that wave? So TV loop antennas have one turn, even though it's kind of look like I'm just trying to thicken this up so it shows, shows up. And again, the same thing, this, this loop's not moving, so our, all of our EMF is that kind, and again, it doesn't matter. Um, but we can say that V EMF, this is also an equation in the book. This is the one probably if you were to take notes and have a note sheet, even though I let you use everything, you would write this one down on your note sheet if I didn't, is negative N times the time derivative of the flux, the flux, magnetic flux through the, the, the uh, loop, right? And we can say that that equals the area of the loop, if we were given, times the time derivative of this B naught, this is the thing we want, times cosine omega t plus some offset that we weren't given and it won't actually matter. And that equals A times B naught omega I'm going to run off my note page here, but it's fine. Uh, omega t plus alpha naught. How do you get A? D flux. We pulled it from flux. Okay. So our, if our V EMF is equal to this, then its maximum is when um, sine omega t plus alpha equals one. Right, that makes sense. So just to rewrite things a little cleaner, the EMF is alpha, sorry, a, b naught, omega, sine omega t plus alpha naught and 
when this bit is equal to one, we have the EMF at its maximum, right? <clears throat> so all we have to go is say, at some point this is one, let's just wipe it off and say, we're looking for what the max is. So I don't even care about the sign term anymore. Let's just say it's one. Oh, okay. So if I know that this is the case, right? Now I have just have the EMF equals A, B naught, omega, I'm done. I was given everything else. There's A, I can get omega from 300 megahertz, and there's the EMF, solve for B naught. A lot of these problems wind up being just sort of thinking in 3D space. Yes, you needed this equation, this is in the book. Um, the way I lecture is, I, I, the book is very readable. I do want you to read the book. You'll read four chapters in this book if I had my way. You'll read six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, seven's a little big, and, um, but it's, we're gonna spend the most time on it too. Read the book, it's, it's a really readable book if you haven't looked at it uh, before. I know most of you guys have any uh, last term in spring. Uh, but the book is pretty easy to read, and they do a really good job of saying, hey, here's an equation we showed you. We'll just put a big box around it. And if you look at the examples, they say, hey, we used this equation. We numbered every one of them. We used this equation. You go like, wait, which one was that? Oh, that's a good equation I keep on hand. And you can go through the examples and be like, oh, I see where they used it and when they decided to. Um, it's, it's not quite hand-holdy, but it's pretty good. Um, there are other books that are like, well, of course you know this but we're not gonna tell you where we told you that. Mm -hmm. We expected you to have memorized every page you read. And this book doesn't do that, which is nice. It's pretty short. So yeah, we can solve for, uh, this guy winds up being uh, 0 0.8 nanoteslas. A tesla, by the way, is obviously just a car, but it's the unit of magnet, magnetic flux. One tesla is like absurdly enormous. Five teslas is rumored to like cause damage to humans. And we're not a magnetic being, but under enough magnetic field, like it starts affecting us. <laughs> and five Teslas is that, that, that kind of like threshold. Um, so usually when you think in Teslas, it's like tiny, like nano Teslas and stuff, because one Tesla is astronomical. Um, that said, I think to make math easy on the quiz, you do have a problem with one Tesla in it, just because it makes things easier. You know, we're looking at this much. All right, questions on that one? Way more sense. It's, Thank you. <laughs> this is why people think EMAG is hard. It's not that it is, it's just find the equation you can use. Here's the book. That's a good resource. Use it like a handbook and go find what it is that you're doing. Go find an example that's similar. Oh, you, you pushed a magnetic field through this. Oh, you use this to find this. Here's what I was given. Here's what I need to know. Done. Yeah, use the data book for Yeah. Yeah. That's what that means. RTFM. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one is 6-6. Six, six. This one was 6-5. This is a square loop. Yeah. All right, so 6.6 six square loop. We've got a, I'm going to draw it really thick because it's supposed to be a wire with current on it. And we've got current going this direction but this is also the z-axis. And we said that there was a square loop and it's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, so area equals 100 centimeters square. We'll just do that right away because we're never going to need it later. And we said that this this current I sub t, or sorry, I of t, is five cosine two pi. I'm going to run out of room. is 5 cosine 2 pi. I'm 
is 10 to the fourth t, which is a really dumb way to write this, but what's, what they're telling you is they're making your math for you, saying, hey, here's an integer multiple of two pi. That's why they write it this way. Yes, I could say it was 20,000 pi, but whatever. And this is in amps. Amps. And then what they want is if there was a small gap here, really tiny one, and you have some positive and negative, and you have some V, v EMF there. Where's the gap? They're saying imagine a gap is in that in that loop, just a tiny one, imperceptibly small. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So determine the EMF induced across a small gap created in the loop. That's part A. A. V M F across small gap in the loop, which is not pictured. Um, so one of the equations we talked about in 331 uh, was the infinite line of current ch of, of current that is just going to crop up everywhere. The reason it crops up everywhere is because it's a good approximation for a lot of stuff, but the math isn't too nasty. Uh, and so from chapter, I think, three or four, when we started seeing this, that wound up being V is in the phi hat direction, mu naught times I in this case, I of, I of t over 2 pi r. Mu naught, we know. That's just a standard. That's a fixed value. I forget what it is offhand because I have calculators for that. <coughs> um, I is our i, our i of t, right? The super pedantic Markov style. Um, so what I would have is this, this is the general form. We need to put it into a form that fits our problem. We have x, y, and z, and we don't have a phi hat in this. Now we can do this in cylindrical if we want, but since we all, what we want to know is what the um, the EMF is, or we want to know if you know if, if this is exactly aligned in this plane, our phi hat direction winds up being either one of one of these two symbols, right? One of these two is positive or negative phi, um, and in this case, positive phi would be that one. Mm -hmm and you would be negative phi. Um, so let's put this in terms of our problem. So V isn't changing, uh, but we're gonna do this, it's gonna be in the negative x hat direction. We're going into the page, right? And positive x is coming out that way, so negative x is going into the page, right? And then mu naught stays the same. We have I of t now, because that's what we have in our problem, and we have 2 pi, our r is just how far away are we, right? And that's in y, so y. And we know that that's five centimeters, sorry, that's in the problem too. Five centimeters. So we can immediately pop that in. So now we have uh, a sort of a custom, kind of, it's the same formula, but it actually applies to our coordinates. Um, this is an important way to think. It's um, yes, your software will do it for you, but you can screw it up, right? So you kind of have to be able to look at this and go, okay, I need to convert this. If what I care about is the flux coming in or out of this plane, yes, I could think about this in cylindrical coordinates and it would go around, and that would be really useful if this loop was maybe not directly aligned in that zy plane if it was somewhere else rotated around, then I would really need to do it in cylindrical or rotate my coordinates or something fancy with the math. But in this case, um, I, I don't have to. It's just set up where I can just go back to Cartesian. I can convert without any effort, which is what I've done here. So I've customized this general formula to fit our problem. And then we just solve it. Um, so we know that our flux, again, this is from chapter three, is the surface integral of B, that B, dot Vs, and we can just take some areas here. We can, they do it, the, the solutions manual does it this way, they go five centimeters to 15 centimeters, right? From here to there, because if it's 10 centimeters long but it's five spaced off, then this must be 15 and five on the y-axis. Um, so they're, they're pushing that integral this way, and we have 
negative x hat mu naught i sure over t of t uh, over two pi y times and our ds in this case is just how how tall is it right which is negative x hat ten centimeters. What was the DS? Could you explain one more time? The area of this, this guy. Okay. They're doing it the integral way. You could have done it. Yeah, you could have done it uh, the other way too. Uh, so they break down to. I'm not going to solve this whole thing out with the math, but this solves to your flux is mu naught i uh, times. 0 0.1, clean that up, so times 0 0.1 t over 2 pi times the natural log, I can't write today, natural log of 15 over 5, and the centimeters cancel out. So the flux winds up being 1.1 times 10 to the negative 7 cosine 2 pi times 10 to the 4, the same thing, T, and that is in Weber's, like the grill, it's spelled the same. Of course, it's some dude's name, but, okay, but that doesn't tell us what the EMF is, that just tells us what the flux is, but the EMF from this chapter and from the last problems I think we did the EMF is just the negative derivative of flux, which is why we went to flux in the first place. So just take the negative derivative of that and you'll get uh, 6.9, that's a nine. Times 10 to the negative three. Sine of Two pi times ten to the fourth t volts. Or you could say six point nine millivolts. Who cares? So that's part A. And if you're wondering how much harder does this class get, this is about as annoying as I'll be. Well, that's not true. You guys are gonna hate polarization, but it's fun. Oh god. What's up? For the 10 centimeters where you do the x hat, um, yeah. could you technically have done the integral going from 0 to 0 0.1? Yeah. Okay. But we did everything in centimeters, so, mm -hmm. yeah. But remember the distance, so the, the um, this formula, as, you're, so as, you're, as you get closer to the loop, to closer to this current source, as r decreases, rb gets bigger. Right? So you have to keep it that fixed distance away. If you were further away, you would have less B field because my B field is doing this, this circle okay, that way. Right? My B field's doing these circles mm -hmm. around the whole thing, right? Around the wire. And so they're really strong here and they're really weak. They go out there and they go all the way around, but they're way weaker out there. So the more the stronger it is, so you have actually more B field passing through. If we were to draw this, you'd have lots here, and then maybe just a couple here. It scales. So that's why you have to do the integral. Mm -hmm. You do the integral this way. And that way it doesn't really. But this way doesn't matter. It's even. It's cross. You just, you just multiply it. Okay. Does that make sense for any, Does that not make sense for anybody else? I can redraw that prettier on the board. <coughs> It's pretty much just math. Yes. Okay. So the fun thing, uh, the Calc 4 has no practical applications in the real world that they've discovered, except for electromagnetics. It's the only thing they can, that's the only applied thing they can, they can push with. Yeah, everything else is vector fields. I'm like, what do they mean? Well, they're just a field. It's just a vector field. We call it A or X or Y or whatever. And Calc 4 is only for, as far as I know, uh, at least we'll learn the calculus in the first class. Yeah, calculus requires this class. Okay, so here's my here's my wire. 
right. And I'm not, for the sake of argument, here's my coordinate planes. I'm not going to draw it. X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. But just to make things a little prettier, I'm going to keep it here. Here's my loop. Who cares about the size? So if my current is going up, my current's going up, my V field's going in this side, right? So I'm going to have a setup like this, right? That's my V field. The closer I am, let's look at this formula again. Uh, mu naught I over 2 pi R. If I make I bigger, V gets bigger. Duh. If I make R bigger, that means I'm moving this whole square over here. Well, now what I have to do, well, I have a loop here, and I have all of this stuff to integrate in. I have to integrate it across this, this direction. Right? Because I've got B field that's heavily stacked up here and maybe a little bit less stacked up here and less stacked up that way. It, it's diminishing as we get further away, as one over R decreases, right? So I need to integrate across this distance, which is what this integral, this five, remember this was, this was at, this is 10, and this is at y equals five, and at y equals 15 centimeters, because it's five centimeters away. So that's why we set this integral up this way, and we just did the exact same thing. But then, that only does this field. Well, this thing's 10 tall as well, right? But I don't have to integrate up this direction because it's uniform in, in z, right? It only changes in y as I get away from y. So all I have to do is do the integral and multiply it by how tall the thing is. So if I made this twice as tall, I made it 20 tall, you need to multiply by 20. You need to double that. The exact same thing. And again, this is assuming infinite, you know, it's fairy tale land, you know, easy math problems. As soon as it stops, well, then you have eddy currents and other stuff that couples in, and that's reality. But the infinite wire problem is really useful um, for understanding EMAG for stuff like this. Because the intuition I want you guys to have is it's really, really tight and compacted through here, and it's weaker up here. And so if I give you this nice square that's parallel, like if I was an asshole, the problem might look like right. Here's a parallelogram. Like, oh, now I'm an asshole, and you have to do all the math. But I, the problem's nice and easy. It's just parallel. So just integrate that way and multiply it. This way, you have to, you have to integrate both ways, and you have to worry about the angle. It's it, giant headache. Okay. Which one of these do you think is on your quiz? Um, so far. <laughs> the wire one, I think that's Okay. Yeah. Multiple choice. Is it the wire one? B. Is it the um, the no numbers current direction? Hey, what was the question? Is it C? That guy gets an F. Uh, <laughs> is it D? Uh, Nick forgot to assign the homework problem that's on the quiz for homework. So he needs to do that example for you guys right now because your quiz is on Wednesday. Wow, did he guess D? If you answer D, that's the right one. C is also uh, appropriate though, we, we'll go with C. Okay, yeah, so I was looking at the homework, and I was like, oh yeah, I was just giving the same quiz as last year, and I was like, shit, that's not, damn it, I didn't assign that. Uh, <laughs> oh, did you use seven position last year? Yeah, uh, eight wasn't out yet. There you go. You could always, you know. I could rewrite it, but I used, I just rewriting the quiz, Canvas is a uh, bitch. Yeah. No. To, to, I do not, I, Canvas is really annoying to um, edit stuff in. And it's like, well, I already made the class. 
Um, you guys are just gonna do everything that they did last time I taught this. So now I need to go in here and look at the problem to find out which problem it is. So give me a sec. Even in, and then using it in um, an iPad is not fun. 